question. What would happen if the Earth and all terrestrial objects suddenly stopped spinning, but the atmosphere retained its velocity? Andrew Brown. Answer. Nearly everyone would die. Then things would get interesting. At the equator, the Earth's surface is moving at about 470 meters per second, a little over 1,000 miles per hour, relative to its axis. If the Earth stopped and the air didn't, the result would be a sudden 1,000 mile per hour wind. The wind would be highest at the equator, but everyone and everything living between 42 degrees north and 42 degrees south, which includes about 85% of the world's population, would suddenly experience supersonic winds. The highest winds would last for only a few minutes near the surface. Friction with the ground would slow them down. However, those few minutes would be long enough to reduce virtually all human structures to ruins. My home in Boston is far enough north to be just barely outside the supersonic wind zone, but the winds there would still be twice as strong as those in the most powerful tornadoes. Buildings from sheds to skyscrapers would be smashed flat, torn from their foundations, and sent tumbling across the landscape. Winds would be lower near the poles, but no human cities are far enough from the equator to escape devastation. Longyearbyen, on the island of Svalbard in Norway, the highest latitude city on the planet, would be devastated by winds equal to those in the planet's strongest tropical cyclones. If you're going to wait it out, one of the best places to do it might be Helsinki, Finland. While its high latitude, above 60 degrees north, wouldn't be enough to keep it from being scoured clean by the winds, the bedrock below Helsinki contains a sophisticated network of tunnels, along with a subterranean shopping mall, hockey rink, swimming complex, and more. No buildings would be safe. Even structures strong enough to survive the winds would be in trouble. As comedian Ron White said about hurricanes, it's not that the wind is blowing, it's what the wind is blowing. Say you're in a massive bunker made out of some material that can withstand 1,000 mile per hour winds. That's good, and you'd be fine, if you were the only one with a bunker. Unfortunately, you probably have neighbors, and if the neighbor upwind of you has a less well-anchored bunker, your bunker will have to withstand a 1,000 mile per hour impact by their bunker. The human race wouldn't go extinct. I mean, not right away. In general very few people above the surface would survive. The flying debris would pulverize anything that wasn't nuclear-hardened. However, a lot of people below the surface of the ground would survive just fine. If you were in a deep basement, or better yet a subway tunnel, when it happened, you would stand a good chance of surviving. There would be other lucky survivors. The dozens of scientists and staff at the Amundsen-Scott Research Station at the South Pole would be safe from the winds. For them... The first sign of trouble would be that the outside world had suddenly gone silent. The mysterious silence would probably distract them for a while, but eventually, someone would notice something even stranger. The air. As the surface winds died down, things would get weirder. The wind blast would translate to a heat blast. Normally, the kinetic energy of rushing wind is small enough to be negligible, but this would not be normal wind. As it tumbled to a turbulent stop, the air would heat up. Over land, this would lead to scorching temperature increases and, in areas where the air is moist, global thunderstorms. At the same time, wind sweeping over the oceans would churn up and atomize the surface layer of the water. For a while, the ocean would cease to have a surface at all. It would be impossible to tell where the spray ended and the sea began. Oceans are cold. Below the thin surface layer, they're a fairly uniform 4 degrees Celsius. The tempest would churn up cold water from the depths. The influx of cold spray into superheated air would create a type of weather never before seen on Earth, a roiling mix of wind, spray, fog, and rapid temperature changes. This upwelling would lead to blooms of life as fresh nutrients flooded the upper layers. At the same time, it would lead to huge die-offs of fish, crabs, sea turtles, and animals unable to cope with the influx of low oxygen water from the depths. Any animal that needs to breathe, such as whales and dolphins, would be hard-pressed to survive in the turbulent sea-air interface.